Hi, welcome to Craft Beer Bucket List with Big Ray and Mike, where we review beers you have to try before you die. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Craft Beer Bucket List Season 2. We are now on Episode 5. I'm your host, Big Ray. Right over here is Mike. How you doing, buddy? Doing pretty good. How are you? Best Thursday ever. You always say that. Don't believe you. Lies. Don't know lies. It is. I, I'm, I'm painfully optimistic, Mike. I can't help myself. <laughs> well, uh, you got some beers to drink? Yes, I do. do you want to you tell everybody what we're going to be drinking tonight? I guess so. All right. First set, our shared beer. It's going to be Ryan Geist. Whiffle. It's a wit beer. Then, Ray is going to be drinking Cabin Boys. It's a beard at the Elosion. It's a Belgian quad. And then to round it out, Mike is going to be drinking Hop Static Channel Dose. There we go, right there. Wow. Channel 2. I'm excited for that. There we go. Do you know why I'm excited for that, Mike? And that's by West Six. No, I don't know why you're excited. I mean, you get excited about some stuff that I don't agree with. So go ahead and tell me. Oh, because because we've done it again. Oops, we've, I did it again. Yes, exactly like that. No, okay. we have another solid lineup. Another solid lineup, absolutely. Like we're getting good at this. No, absolutely, we are. Uh, you know, I'm going to give a lot of kudos to uh, myself uh, for picking <laughs> out two solid beers. Um, and then I'm going to give a lot of kudos to you for bringing on the Belgian quad, which is one of my favorite beer styles. Um, you know, it's up there uh, for me as far as beer style. So, yeah, it's uh, one I'm, I'm fairly new to. I've had three, maybe four uh, Belgian quads uh, so far. This one is, is easily my favorite. And uh, I think, honestly, dude, probably in my top 10 favorite beers now, this one for me is just that good. So I'm excited to bring this one on the show oh he's just diving right in i'm not gonna wait for you dude you're just talking and talking hey by the way i don't know if you saw quarantine i on. i i noticed that yeah uh, it's like whoa big big change there buddy um i had it six weeks so and it was it's getting quite burly and um it'll come back uh, probably start of September, I'll start growing it out again. No, oh, right on. So I'll keep it. Tri- I'll keep it kind of trimmed down through the summer. Probably. I don't know. You know how it goes. You've known me for a while. My my yeah, my uh, facial year facial my facial hair appearance changes. It it does. So I'm I'm the same way, Mike. Yeah, I grow a full beard in winter. When it comes spring, and I start getting sweaty, I shave it back down to just a goatee. Do you, do you still trim your goatee pretty short as well? Uh, I I like to. So, caveat, you know, away from the beard. Um, I got my haircut today for the first time in in several months. And uh, in Oklahoma, with the new you know regulations, uh, mm-hmm. you you have to wear a face mask while you're getting a haircut. Um, I go to a salon. Like one of my best friends' girlfriends works. So anyway. I, I, she had to wear a mask, and they have all these special rules in place. So, long story short, I didn't get my goatee trim today because of the the COVID nineteen rules. Yeah. So it's just whatever. It can stay bigger and puffier for now. Well, it's still a bummer, though. It is. I know you talked about you don't trim your own goatee or beard. I, that's for me. I'm the only per. I'm the only person that touches my goatee slash beard. I don't have a. Yeah, I haven't yeah. had a goatee in forever. The only person that touches my facial hair is me. Yeah, like I've done it. Uh, it's not that I'm opposed to doing it. I just usually am terrible at it. I always get it. What you know? Always, it's always uneven, or I'll cut my lip with the beard trimmer. I don't know how many times I've done that in my life. I'm like, how did I do that? It has a guard. Still, I get it's like, hmm. not not my strong suit, man. Get the duck lips because they're all puffy because you cut them. I'm like. Like, what happened to you? So this Ryan Geist beer that we've got in front of us. Um, <laughs> Great segue, Mike. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? Uh, the cheers, my friend. Oh, sure. Yeah. Sure. Uh, cheers. cheers. Yeah. I like that. Mm. 
Mm. So we've had a couple of beers by Ryan guys uh, in the past. We have. Uh, so, you know, they're out of Cincinnati, Ohio. They've got a really cool uh, setup. It's a big warehouse that I've been to. Um, you know, you kind of walk up for, so it seems like 40,000 flights of stairs to get in. And then you're in this expansive uh, tap room. It's really awesome. Um, so what I'll say is when, when I first encountered Ryan Geis, everything was an IPA, it seemed like for me. Everything that they had that was notable was an IPA. And right. now they're kind of bringing on uh, some other styles of beer into the marketplace. And I'm pretty satisfied with their um, with their quality overall, you know, especially like, you know, like this wit beer. Um, I'm liking it. You know, it's um, – I think it's pretty good representative uh, of the style. Um, you know, it's uh, it's five percent ABV, so it's going to be lower lower on the end. So it's very drinkable. You can crush several of these. It's to me, it kind of it tastes like a traditional uh, Belgian wit, um, which I like. It's got um, you know, it's got the citrusy aromas and the, the the zesty citrus flavors throughout the throughout. They're mild, but they're throughout the the whole tasting process, and then. It's got a little bit of that wit beer spice, which I really like. So I'm, I'm, I'm liking this beer so far. Uh, what are your thoughts? So this is my first go round uh, with this particular beer. And I'm a fan of Rheingeist. Uh, you've sent me uh, several of these in the past. And I'm, I'm a huge fan of wit beers. And I'm with you. I think this is a solid representation of the beer style. I like that there's a subtle dryness about this beer. I think that's something that's missing from a lot of beers. Um, it's like not like you know, not too dissimilar from a wine hound we describe it. It's just got like that dry, just like little little you know, yeah. chap that you get. And I, I appreciate that. Uh for being a wit, it's a fairly complex beer. Um, it's got some nice citrusy notes about it. Um, it's it's well balanced. And again, it's got you know the traditional wit, the 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 bright wheat notes that we'd expect. Uh -huh. uh, it's incredibly smooth. Um, yeah. solid flavor front to back. Uh, I think the carbonation for this is on point. I, I like the crispness that it has. It, it goes well with that dry, uh, little hint of dry that you get, but I like that it's dry and remains smooth. You know, like a dry wine, it's like, it kind of hits you, makes you pucker a little bit. And I, and I don't get that with this beer, even though it has that slight dryness about it. Sure. No, I mean, I, I would concur with all of that. I think, um, you know, it, it's to me, it, it, the lemon aspect of it kind of comes on a little strong, um, which I'm not saying it's a bad thing. It's just that it's very present and forward. Um, you know, it's, it, I know online, you know, some folks talked about getting a little bit of banana and some, uh, s some, some clove and stuff like that. I'm not getting anything, maybe a little clove, but not anything like banana myself. Uh, how about you? Uh, I don't get any of that. Um, I mean, usually we see that with what, uh, off the top of my head, it was banana and clove. Um, Heffy. Heffy, but thank you. Mike, it's like right there on the tip of my tongue. Um, and I'm not picking up any of that from uh, from this beer at all. I mean, I get citrus notes, like maybe a, a tangerine, orange, maybe something like that. But banana or clove, my taste bros are not detecting that at all. Yeah, I mean, but, but you know, the, the lemony zestiness, I'm, I'm getting quite a bit of it, and it's got that winter spice, um, you know, so it's it's got some good things going for it. You know, my, my favorite, I, I've said this before, I think the, the Santa Adams Cold Snap is one of my uh, favorite beers from there, and that's a wit beer. And so, sometimes the, the Cold Snap can be a little much as far as the flavor coming on strong. So this this seems like a, maybe a, a a little bit of a tamed down version of that. Um, which I think is a good thing. I think this is a, you know, a very, very good beer overall. Um, you know, I would probably give this beer an eight out of 10, um, cause I think it's a really good, uh, beer for the style. I think it tastes good. I think you could have a couple of these and feel pretty good as far as, you know, the, the, the taste buds, the taste bros. And yeah. then, you know, I think you could crush a couple of these in a row as well. The, um, you know, and with this, you know, I, you need, for me, I need a chicken type dish of some sort. And it's not like hot wings or anything like this, but maybe some, some mild, uh, chicken dish of some sort. And, you know, you're, you're the, you're the more the, the food guy. So I'm going to leave the, that to you, but I'm really feeling like this is a good, uh, 
beer to pair with some maybe a rotisserie chicken or something like that. Yeah, and uh, I was I was thinking about that when you when you brought it up. And uh, for me, this is. I mean, you could drink this at any time, but if I'm going out to, I thought specifically of lunch with this beer and uh, at lunch, I'm a huge fan of a chicken Caesar salad. Um, I was even thinking of like a, a nice grilled chicken sandwich. That oh, was some melty cheese, you know, fresh tomato, um, maybe some art, artisan chips, something like that. And I think that's how I would enjoy this particular beer. No, I can see that. That makes sense. So, you know, like again, I, you know, Eight out of ten, uh, chicken Caesar salad or a chicken sandwich, or maybe a club sandwich or something like that. Yeah, um, absolutely. I think that would work um, well. This works well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, what kind of rating do you think? You, what ballpark is your rating in? Uh, I was gunning towards a maybe eight, maybe eight and a half. I was okay. bobbling between the two. Um, Just say so, eight, so we're agreeing. So yeah, I'll I'll, say, I'll give it an eight. Uh, so two for two, say eight out of ten. Eight out of ten. Yeah. Hundred percent of the time, it works. Eighty percent of the time. That's right. Or that is, I, don't I know guess. That. Yeah. Sounds, sounds legit. 80% score 100% of the time. Yes. Okay. I'd put my signature next to that. <laughs> Would you? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Abs- absolutely not. I would yeah, totally right. not do that. Yes, I would. I don't know. <laughs> Either way, no, that's still a fantastic score. It's got its place in the world, and uh, I think it's a solid spot to be. So that's so. the Wiffle by Ryan Geist. Wiffle with beer. It's very tasty. It's a great representative of the style. And uh, Ray. Yes. How you doing over there? I'm doing fantastic. I just drank a really yummy beer, Mike. I was um, trying to fix my microphone and hide it with the beer, but it didn't work. <laughs> so it's all good. Hey, I gotta, I gotta take a, a caveat, or not a caveat, but I gotta take a detour here, Mike. Yeah, what is it? There's information that I need to have, and you've got it. What is it? What do you need? Welcome back, Ray. All right, guys. So thanks for hanging out through that awesome commercial break. Yeah. So anyway, I'm ready to dive into my beer, Mike. Are you ready for me to dive into my beer? I'm ready um, to dive into your beer, or I'm ready for you to dive into your beer. I'm <laughs> diving into my beer and your beer. Yeah. Uh, yes. We're exactly. diving into yeah. our beers. Yes. So you know, I've got the bearded theologian by Cabin Boys Brewery. That's I've cool. got. Tell us. Hop Static Channel Two, West Six Brewery. So cool. Love it. Can't get enough. It's awesome. Best brewery ever. Dude, I'm a, I'm a big fan of West 6th. Can't deny it. Do it right? else I can't deny. I can't deny how much I love the sound. Oh, yeah. Here you go, Ray. One. Or here. Three, two, one. So oh, much, that yes. Clean. That was clean. Clean. Dude. Oh my Dude. gosh. I am such a huge fan of this beer. Ray is having a beer gasm. <laughs> Close. I, I I couldn't fake one of those if I had to. Um <laughs> God, I can't believe I said that. Um, I, I'm not getting in, I'm not getting involved in this. Uh I'm I'm done. So anyway, Ke- <laughs> Kevin <laughs> Boys Brewery is in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Yes. <laughs> They're located just uh, outside of downtown uh, in the, what's become a, like a, a small brewery district, if you will. Um, not that the breweries are small, but the area in which there are a handful of local breweries. And uh, I tell you, I, I like they took over an old warehouse and it, it took them quite a while to renovate the building. And I enjoy driving by it um, off 11th in Peoria and, and, and seeing it turn into what it is now. Admittedly, it's not a brewery I've been inside of yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I hate to admit that, you know, one of the local ones I haven't been to, but I'm a huge fan of their beers. Uh, everything they make is just quality. And even this one with their quad Belgium, it's a uh, or Belgian quad. It's just like, dude, these guys do it and they do it right. And uh, so they've made a big splash in, in you know, the local market. Uh, they're doing big things. And uh, I'm excited to 
to review this beer and add it to, you know, our craft beer bucket list. Um, like I said, I'm a big fan. I've had several of these, and it makes me happy to talk about it here. So, and you know, Mike. Uh, Ray, I'm, Ray. Yeah, Mike. Cheers, Mike. Cheers. Oh, yes. Thank you for reminding me. Good cheers. And look look at this. Look at the beautiful beard on this fellow. I mean. The, it's a very fine beard. It is. I mean, uh, I, he I like didn't it. shave his quarantine beard. No, he did not. He is keeping that year round, sporting it like a boss. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, he is. So, very, very fine uh, beard. It, it is a very fine beard. Uh, you know, my I am not an expert at all on the, the Belgium quads. Uh, I think I told you I've had maybe a half a dozen of these. Yeah. Uh, overall. So, it's something I'm, I'm fairly new to. But this one, man, just hit me right in the taste, bros. Like, they immediately just started with the Gregorian chants. Um, my first sip with this, however long ago it was. And uh, it's just like, dude, I mean, every time I have one, I get that same feeling like it's brand new. It's just so overwhelming uh, for me anyway, how, how good this is. So, so, you know, with Belgian quads, they're usually, you know, a bolder flavor, a stronger beer. They're the, you know, they're, they're inspired by the, the Trappist brewers of Belgium. So it's, you know, a Belgium quad or, Dubel or Trapel or whatnot. So, you know, um, you know these are these are serious beers as far as flavor. Um, it's supposed to be bold. It's supposed to be very, um, you know, nuanced, um, very thorough flavors throughout. Um, so, I mean, there's a lot, it's a lot going into that. Um, so, I mean, you know, you and I don't know what's the ABV on that because usually the the quads are like nine. 10 12 yeah. percent right. right so this one's 8.4 uh, so it's a little bit of a weaker version i guess yeah it's it, i know that it's printed right on the can uh, it's got 24 ibus uh, which for me is great i'm an ipa guy so i like a high ibu um, i think 24 works well in this beer uh -huh. uh, overall it's not too bitter but man there's some really you know strong oatmeal flavors and raisin flavors that really shine through with this um it's a little bready overall mm -hmm. um maybe a, a little bit of vanilla and uh some i almost said fig newton but no just like figs right you know if you yeah. ever just had like a turkish fig that flavor is not the sweet stuff like you find in a newton but like just a real fig yeah like that flavor is is shines through in this a little bit of spice to it. it. It does have some spicy notes to it. Um, I tell you, this is very firmly carbonated. Yeah. So I'm, I really appreciate that. Uh, medium body overall, but just huge flavor. And uh, I, I, like I said, this is something I'm new to. I don't really know how to describe it the best, but it's so bold, so strong, and the flavors work well together. There's not any one flavor that just socks it to you you know what i mean like an ipa with only a mosaic hop i mean you just get punched in the throat with the mosaic <laughs> hops yeah so this is where it's very strong everything works well together as a team yeah and uh, that's one thing that makes me really appreciate you know one this style of beers i need to you know learn more and drink more of these but this one is just yes, you do. killer the guys in tulsa did a great job with this yeah so it makes me think like, you know, maybe with a little bit of, um, you know, and I don't know what run they are. I mean, they're canning it. So this has got to be close to their, what they is close to a good recipe as they got, right? Like this, no recipe is ever perfected, but um, they, they think this one's darn close. But it's interesting to me that it's, uh, you know, clocking in at 8.5 or whatever it was. Is, right. You know, when I think of Belgian quads, I'm thinking 12%, um, you know, something that's going to, kick you in the pants a little bit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. So, but no, I mean, it, the flavor is what's the most important part. It's got the, the malt, the strong maltiness, you know, it's got the bready taste. Um, you know, Belgian quads are good if you're going to age them or, or cellar them. Um, that's right. a good style beer to do that with uh, and see how the flavor uh, matures, uh, you know, overall. So, uh, but you know, if it's got good flavor, that's what matters the most, right? Right, absolutely. And uh, I got to say this, and I'm, I'm going to read this verbatim right off the can. 
You gotta do it in your yep. uh, like a uh, movie preview voice. Hmm. Okay. In the time yeah. before times when Ray was on the microphone and talking to his friend Mike across the river Mississippi, coming to you live, the Belgian quad from Cabin Boys Brewing. This quadruple ale has deep aromas and flavors of raisins and caramel from the malt, hints of cinnamon and spices pair perfectly with a pipe and a good book. B-Y-O-B. Bring your own beard. So, you brought up a good point here, Ray. What's that? Tobacco. Yeah, man. I could see, you know, and and I, we don't talk about this as much, but, you know, there's a couple times I mentioned, you know, this would go good with a cigar or something like that. And oh, they yeah. bring it right up. They say this would be good with some pipe tobacco. Yeah, where I... I've tried to smoke a tobacco pipe in my day and I was, I, I was, I sucked at it. I had no one teach me how to pack it. I tried it on my own and just failed miserably. So I avoided that. Um, but dude, I think I'm a huge fan of rum dip cigars. I've talked about that before. I would totally take a nice cigar with this beer. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I think beer and cigars, I'm going straight for uh, a porterhouse, dude, you know, oh. big T-bone steak, you know, some mashed potatoes, you know, big dinner rolls, yeah. You know, and uh, that's that's where I'm going with this beer, like all day. So, uh, what what kind of rating would you give this beer? Uh, nine out of ten, easy. Nine out of ten, man. Yeah, man. Hitting hitting those high notes, and yeah. you're gonna eat a porterhouse with it. Absolutely, Me, yeah. you know, medium rare all day. Medium rare, Whew. medium rare. Yeah, maybe medium. Um, yeah. I'd be good with that. I'm more of a so, medium guy. No, that's fair. Um, you know, a lot of times when you ask for medium rare, it comes out a little more medium, you know, because they got to they got to play safe nowadays, which which I get. Um, you know who likes her steaks like uh, just like rare? No, who's that? Uh, Caleb, you know Caleb. I'm not gonna say last I, names. Sure, no, that's fair. yeah. Um, I saw him eat a steak that I swear one time it wasn't even cooked at all. It's just cut up and given to him. Wow. I was, you know, it's like when the whole thing you're like. Yeah, you can't help it, but you got to like choke back some potential vomiting that's going to happen. Uh, I, I was just like, "How are you eating this, dude?" Oh, but yeah, dude, he loved it. He loved it. Yeah, I've seen a lot of folks. I've, I've I've been to dinner with a handful of guys, and uh, they get the blue rare, and uh, it's like I, I I can't do it. I've got, I've got to have some some heat throughout. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Like, have, no. have you ever had steak tartare? Have you ever tried that? Uh, I guess not, because I don't know what the heck you're talking about. Oh, okay. It's, uh, how do I, it's kind of like the sushi of steak, if you will. It's a, it's, it's a steak that's prepared raw. Okay. So it's, uh, it's very different. I've tried it a couple of times. Uh, not for me. Flavor was there. The texture kind of got to me, the fact that it was cold. And uh, it's like, this. I don't mind trying something new for the first time. Uh, but I, I didn't enjoy it. It's like this is not for me. I prefer mine to, you know, to be cooked a little at least. Yeah, yeah. I can feel that. I can feel that. Well, can I talk about my beer, dude? I would love to hear about your beer, Michael. I'm finishing up. Uh, it's awesome. Uh, uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> All right, like my sound effects. I love your sound effects. Those are fantastic. Pop Static Channel 2 from West Six Brewery. Ray, this is the ASMR version of our podcast. Pop Static Channel 2. 7.5% ABV. The hops included are Galaxy, Mosaic, Cashmere, and Equinot. I can't do it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, if you'd like if you if you'd like more of this ASMR by Mike, uh, contact me directly. <laughs> the hot pill brings tropical fruit, berry citrus, and pine character, alongside a toasty caramel and bready malt body. A highly aromatic hop forward IPA with notes of tropical fruits, stone fruit, berry citrus, and pine. 
A slightly sweet malt profile carries hop flavors to the finish with notes of caramel and toasty bread. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Is that wow. going to pick up pretty well? Could you hear that all right? Uh, I can hear that just fine. Um, I'll be able to keep that in post for both the YouTube and, and the podcast. So I think you'll be just fine there, buddy. <laughs> Talk out a future? ASMR voiceovers? Uh, yes. And, uh, you know, I'm going to I'm gonna say this now, Mike. So if, if you're hearing this on Anchor, go straight to our Instagram, our Facebook, Twitter. Drop us a comment if you like that. If you're viewing this on YouTube, smash the keyboard and give us a comment now and see if you want some more of those ASMR beer reviews from us. <laughs> and we'll do it for you guys. But I mean, we need feedback from you all, though. We, yeah. we need to know if you, if you want this. Yeah. So help us out. <laughs> no, it's, it's you know what? This beer is really good. Um, you know, I've drank more IPAs since we've started doing this podcast than I haven't along uh, ever before. Right. Um, so I know Galaxy is a very, I don't want to say common, a very popular um, hop, right? Um, it is. And, you know, the, I, and I don't know if the order of the hops uh, on the can, so it's different in the order of the hops on the can versus the, the profile I pulled online, but, um, and I don't know if that matters. Uh, so I don't know. If, if it's just a mix up or if there's intentional, something intentional there, but Equinot is the second hop on the can. And uh, so it's got some different, it's got some very different flavors come through. I mean, it's, um, you know, it's, it's got the light caramel uh, backbone to it. It's got a little nuttiness. It's very hop forward. Um, you know, it's, um, it's very tropical in its flavors, you know, overall. And so, so when they say, you know, you can taste the tropical fruits, the stone fruit, the berry, the citrus, and you know, that very much, very much. Um, I like it. I think it's a good, so this is a rotator series. You know, they had the channel one, which we reviewed with beer, babe, Jess on episode 18, I think. I believe so. Yeah. Season um, one. And so this is the, the second round of this. And I think it's a good follow up, and I, I, I like it a lot. Um, you know, the, the, it's a, it's well carbonated, well balanced on a carbonation. So I think that's done right, done well. Uh, and overall, uh, I'm a hop, uh, I'm not a hop slash IPA guy. Um, but I think this has good flavor to it for an IPA. So I'd, I'd give it an, uh, an eight out of 10. I think it's well done. And then, um, unique New York, unique New York. Um, so overall, I'd give it an 8 out of 10. I, I think, you know, we've talked about IPAs before. I think um, you're, you're best to go with like a chicken tacos or fish tacos with an IPA. Or, you know, if you've got like a, a chicken breast with some um, like the, 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 the mango type salsa that's on top of it could go well with this, I think, too. Um, so that's where I'm going to go with it. You know, the, the, the flavor is really, really, really uh, forward and sh I wouldn't want to say strong, but very present. Right. Uh, it's 7.5% ABV. So it's almost as high as ABV as your Belgian quad. My Belgian quad, yeah. So, no, I like it. You know, it's funny because, uh, like I said, before you and I started doing this, IPAs were down on my list, and now it's IPAs all the dang time. Because I know, right? So. so, I mean, you don't have to do that, Mike. You can get other styles. No one's forcing you to drink all these IPAs with me. I just, you know, it comes... It, comes and goes i've got a couple beers in my fridge that um when we do an in-person podcast which is going to happen yes yes it is um i've got a couple of really special beers that we're going to do an in-person podcast with Ooh, looking forward to that Mike. yeah the plot thinkings it does so i have a question for you mike on this beer sure, sure yeah anything and, uh, so I'm, I'm reviewing anything, the, the... anything for you Oh, I would do anything for you. For anyway, love. I changed it, dude. I'm, I'm in improv. Okay. I'm not meatloaf. Or maybe I am. Uh, no, so I, just just reviewing our notes for the show tonight, Mike, um, I don't see the IBUs on your beer. Um, does it happen to be labeled on the can? You know, I don't think it is. You know, uh -oh. and that's you know, and that's actually getting more common. They're taking the IBUs off the cans, um, so they're supposed to help determine bitterness, right? Right. And what what really happens with that is there's you know people perceive bitterness differently. Sure. Um, and so a lot of people are getting away from that only because two things: number one, people perceive it differently; number two, they're like 
from everything I can tell is the, the, it's really hard. Like who can, you know, perceive I, IBUs over 70, you know, what does that even mean? Yeah. You know, some that are IBUs like 150 and then some that are 60 and they taste totally different. And then, you know, the IBUs also change when balanced with different things, whether that's different types of hops or alcohol content, you know, like a lot of, um, double IPAs actually taste less hoppy. Yeah. So Even I mean, though they have a higher IBU, right? Yeah. So, I mean, so, you know. I'm with you. It's subjective, but at least yeah. it gives you kind of an idea. Yeah, it should. It should. But no, this doesn't happen on it. Um, okay. So, you know, this is, you know, this is a hop test beer. <laughs> this says it right there. That's what I'm reading it. Uh, gotcha. But no, it doesn't have it on there. 7.5% ABV. This is uh, West 6. Hop Static Channel 2. Work, 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 work. Right work, on. Work. And it's really good. 8 out of 10. So. So, solid. Yeah, so, solid. Solid lineup, Ray. So to, As to always. Kind of, yeah, to kind of recap what we got going on here is uh, we shared Brian Guy's uh, Whiffle Whip Beer, which is that beer right there. It's a Whip Beer. We determined, both of us determined it was 8 out of 10. So, it's a very solid score. Right, yeah, buddy. Yeah, and then you had the bearded theologian by Cabin Boys, oh, wow. and you yeah. gave that a nine out of ten. It was nine. a very good beer. Yeah, easy nine. Yeah, and decided we need to get, drink more of those when we're together. By the way, that's what you yeah, decided. Absolutely just now. right. Yes, yeah, so we're gonna sit down and drink. I mean, they sell these in four packs. By the way, um, so I'll drink so three and you drink one. Thanks. I was just gonna buy us each a four pack. You know, we can just sit on the front porch and just each kill our own. You know, quad. That'll work. We'll yeah, kill a lot of quads. Yes, indeed. So to follow it up with the last beer, my beer was a West Six Hop Static Channel Two, um, which is the second in the rotator series of the Hop Static, and I gave that an eight out of ten. So overall, we've got an eight, a nine, and an eight. All three craft beer bucket list. All three added to the list of beers you have to try before, before you die. You die absolutely. So uh, you know, overall, Ray, solid lineup as you always say. I liked it. Yes. Um, I think it's time to conclude this podcast and, and, and I'll let and. you take it out with everything else. Thank you so much, sir. All right. Outstanding. So everybody, thank you so much for tuning in again. We appreciate each and every one of you listeners. If you haven't started to follow us on social media, let me invite you all in. We love to have a conversation with everybody. We're just two regular guys talking about something we're passionate about. And obviously you are too. You're listening to our podcast. It's beer. So if you would, you know, again, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Give us those likes and thumbs ups. And also, we do upload all of our podcasts to Anchor, and they distribute to other podcast platforms for us. If you're tuning in on Apple or Google or Stitcher, please give us those five stars. Otherwise, give us a thumbs up. Be sure to share our podcast with your family and friends. And as always, guys, please don't drink and drive, but do drink and support local. So thank you everybody so much. We'll see you in episode six. Have a great night. Y'all be safe. Adios.